I was messing around in GIMP. I was trying to find a way to add a watermark that is hidden, but that you can restore if you know how. Um, it, it doesn't protect your work to put one of these hidden watermarks. People can still copy it all day long, but you can prove, if you ever have to later, that a picture is yours, unless it's been so heavily manipulated that it destroys the watermark. But the goal is to create one that is difficult to destroy, mostly through manipulation and compression and such. So the first thing I thought of was something like this, where you just have your name, you know, you can see jodybruchon.com. Uh, you would ideally do something like uh, make it where it's darker so that it can't be seen. This is something I've done before, and you see I tried to also apply sort of a rainbow, an exclusion. I played with layers. Um, what we're going to do is actually make a text layer, and let's just do again jodybruchon.com. Uh, but this time, what we're going to do is instead of what we've got here right now, um, I'm going to make it aerial, and I'm going to make it Oops, I'm going to make it middle gray. Instead of what it has now, I'm going to take it and make it middle gray, which means everything is going to be at 50%. Uh, frankly, it's probably easier just to 50 all three of them like this to get middle gray. There may be a button down here, but I don't care. <clears throat> so we start with middle gray. And let's just position it with the alignment tool. Click on the layer align horizontally and vertically. Now this is an interesting image because this section poses a lot of trouble. You'll notice that the N is on this pink shirt but the M is on over this dark shirt. The C goes over both dark and light areas. Now you remember that grain merge mode that I used earlier? Well, I'm going to switch to Grain Merge, and I'm sorry, my screen's bigger than the capture, so the menu does go off the screen. Notice that nothing happens. There is no visible anything when you do Grain Merge. Well, that's because it's Middle Gray, and Middle Gray doesn't show up on a Grain Merge. So here's what we need to do. We need to scratch this up, and we need to get it rainbowy because... We want it to be resilient against a wide variety of image conditions. Just like what you have here, you have some bright areas, you have some dark areas, and it crosses all of those boundaries. So the first thing we need to do is bring up the gradient tool, and I use the rainbow full saturation spectrum. So I'm going to pull this rainbow gradient, and I'm going to color it. And this is what this new layer is for. We'll bring this new layer up above the text. We'll change it to darken or something like that and over the main body of the text not the tails and I'll hold control to keep it straight over the main body of the text we pull this rainbow effect okay so you'll see that the tail ends that it starts and ends at red but everything in between covers the full spectrum so what we're gonna do is this basically gives us middle colors we don't have full saturation, but we don't have zero saturation. And I'm going to go ahead and merge it down, which makes it only apply to that layer. Now you've got a rainbow. What happens if we do the grain merge now? Well, now it looks very different, doesn't it? You, see, you can see that you've got this rainbow. And normally what I would do at this point is just pull the opacity super far down. And this works to a very low opacity. You'd actually be pretty surprised and as I crank it up you can see it appearing on the arm but this is not good enough the problem is let, well, let me show you the problem so let's just go ahead we've got our middle rainbow and I'm going to edit copy visible and over here in Irfan view alright I have the picture and the technique that I use to pull this back out to get it to reveal itself is sharpen. So in Irfan view, Shift S, or you can go over here and it's buried over here. Sh image sharpen, Shift S, and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Now this is at 10% opacity. 
Um, you notice though that you don't really see the letters very well. You can kind of see the boundaries of them because they're clean. But this won't survive uh, any kind of resizing and you can barely see them at all. So I like to goof off with stuff like gamma correction which you see you can start seeing boundaries more and whatnot. but the point is it is a flawed methodology. It doesn't really work. Here's how we improve on that. Instead of just having this rainbow set up, you need to make it much more random. And to do that, we're going to use noise. I kind of I kind of prefer HSV noise. So here, HSV noise, watch this. I turn the dulling all the way down, which maximizes how pointy it is and how sharp each pixel is. And then you tell it that you want to do saturation and value at about 50% maybe. Um, there we go. Hue 2, that'll be fine. But you don't want to nuke your rainbow, so don't overdo that. What this does is it randomizes up these pixels so that you have this sort of a cloud. Uh, in fact, I can probably zoom in. You have sort of a scratchy cloud of pixels instead of having just straight, and in fact, I'll hit reset. You can see it's just the rainbow. But if we top, turn the dulling down, turn the saturation and the value up, turn the hue up, you get more of different colors in there, but it still has the overall rainbow look. Now, the reason this is important, uh, let me show you without the grain merge. This is the regular layer. And the reason that we use grain merge instead is because look at the pink shirt. If you were to just drop the opacity to a real low number, you can see... You can see it here, and no problem seeing it here, but it's not affecting that pink shirt at all. So what we do is, let's pull it down to, what was that? It's like 5% that we were at. All right, that's normal at 5%. Now let's switch the layer mode back to grain merge. You don't need to be able to see it. In fact, you want to not be able to see it, but it still be there. See when I zoom in, you see all that noise? But to the casual onlooker, this just looks like regular image noise. This doesn't even register on their radar. But we're not a casual looker. We are someone who wants to find our own watermark. I'm going to pull it back over into Earth and View again. Bonk. And then let's go to the area of interest where we know our watermark is currently sitting. Well, it's there somewhere, but we can't see it. So again, sharpen, 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 and just repeat the sharpening. Oh, look what's coming out. All that noise that you added has an extremely high frequency. It's the same thing that's used to determine fine detail in images. What you've done is you've added fine detail that follows a pattern. So now when you sharpen, it brings out that fine detail. And you notice when the halos start getting extreme, it starts to lose it. And in fact, the more you sharpen, the less you see at some point. But let's roll it back. And you can see that after several sharpening passes, it's clearly there. Oh, but I can't read all that. That might not be jodybruchon.com. I can't read that. Well, okay, fine. So what we do is we make it more extreme. Dropping the gamma here, which is the midtones. Huh. I wonder whose image this is. Gee, I wonder. I wonder I wonder who owns this image. Let me know in the comments if you uh if you have an idea of who it is that might own this image. You know, I'm starting to sense a bit of a pattern here. Now let me show you how resilient this watermark is. Let's bring it down to opacity of 1. And let's edit and copy visible. Paste. All right. Down, right. So our watermark is in this area. If we zoom in really close, can't really see anything, right? So remember, this is at an opacity of 1. So let's just do it again. Let's sharpen, 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 sharpen. Seven, eight passes, nine passes, ten passes. You can faintly see the C right there, but we have the same problem at opacity one. Although, if you sharpen enough, you can see that something was there. How high do we need to get this watermark to go before it actually starts to work? Opacity 2, 3. Let's go between. We 5 worked, so let's try 3. And zoom in on the center. Unfortunately, Earth and View zooms to the top left corner when you hit Control-H for a 1-to-1 -one view. 
Sharpen, sharpen, sharpen. This is at opacity of 3.0. Ah, look what's coming out. And that's at opacity 3 that that has come out. So now, and if we do the gamma thing we did before, where we drop it really low, bonk. Yep, even at opacity 3, it's not readable, but you can see most of it right there. If nothing else, this is enough to prove that this is your image. Ah, do you see whenever there's a moiré pattern from the zooming? You see how sometimes it gets bolder? Bonk. I mean, it's pretty clear what's going on there. So I hope this has been helpful. It's my little watermark technique. And you can use this. The coolest thing about this is that you can use this once you've created it on any picture. You could plaster the image with it. In fact, if I was to take this and just copy paste it all over this picture, nobody would notice it because the grain merge... If it, Here, let me move it actually. The grain merge causes it to absorb through the back. Basically, it merges the noise. But there, opacity of 5, you can kind of see it up in the clouds. But if we reduce it to the effective opacity of 3, I can't really even tell that it's there. Until you sharpen it. And then it's very obviously there. So there you go. Watermark in GIMP. Using noise and grain merge. Have a good one.